Number 10. John Tyler was the first vice president to take office after the sitting president died. William Henry Harrison died only 31 days into his term, and Tyler was sworn into office just two days later. Including Tyler, eight vice presidents have ascended to the presidency upon the death of their predecessor. Number 9. Like Harrison, Tyler was born to a prominent Virginian family. His father, Tyler Sr., served in the Virginia House of Delegates. He was an anti-federalist and friends with founding fathers such as Patrick Henry, James Monroe, and Thomas Jefferson, the latter being one of his son's political and ideological heroes. Number 8. Tyler was one of America's only independent presidents. The only other was George Washington. Washington had been fundamentally opposed to the idea of parties and refused to join one. Tyler was a member of the Whig Party when he took office, but clashed with the party so much that they expelled him only five months into his term. Tyler had always been more a Democrat than a Whig. He'd only ever left the Democrats for the Whigs in the first place because of a clash with Andrew Jackson. He ended up rejoining the Democrats in his post-presidency. Number 7. Because Harrison was the first president to die in office, the issue of presidential succession wasn't clear. Tyler asserted that he was now president and would begin a term of his own. But many at the time thought he should only serve as acting president until a special election could be held. It's perhaps only because of Tyler's insistence that the current president was set. Number 6. As part of the Southern elite, Tyler was raised to be an intellect and a gentleman. He loved poetry, music, and literature. All throughout his life, he often quoted Shakespeare, especially to charm women. For as social as he was with the elite, he was just as inept with the common man. Biographer Robert Seeger says he, quote, had an ingrained shyness and discomfort in the presence of people with dirty fingernails. Number 5. John Tyler is the only president who sided with the Confederacy. Sixteen years after his presidential term, he led the secession movement in Virginia, and some Northerners even blamed him as the primary reason why the state seceded. He didn't live to see much of the Civil War, as he died in January 1862. Number 4. Tyler was the first man to be married while serving as president. His wife, Letitia, died in the second year of his presidency, meaning for a time he was like his hero Thomas Jefferson, a widower in the White House. However, this didn't last long. Less than two years later, he married 24-year-old Julia Gardner. Tyler was 30 years her senior. His eldest daughter, from his first marriage, was five years older than Julia. Number 3. In 2020, John Tyler had living grandchildren. Tyler was having children well into his later years. When he was 63, his fourth son, Lion Gardner, was born in 1853. Lion also had children late in life. When he was 72, Lion Jr. was born. And three years after that, he had another son, Harrison Ruffin. In September 2020, Lion Jr. died at 95. Yet, as of this recording, Harrison Ruffin is still living at age 94. This is a grandchild of the 10th president, alive to see the presidency of the 46th president, presidents whose terms were separated by 172 years. Number 2. John Tyler never liked Abraham Lincoln, seeing him as a dangerous ally to abolitionists and an opponent to states' rights. During the 1860 election, he stated, quote, The defeat of Lincoln was the great matter at issue, and that all others were subordinate. His son, Lyon, carried his father's legacy. Lyon used his prestige as a president of the College of William and Mary to attack Lincoln. In 1928, he declined to attend a celebration of Lincoln's birthday, saying the former president was no hero and deserved no such honor. Number 1. Tyler nearly became the second president to die in office. While aboard the USS Princeton, a cannon malfunctioned and killed six men 
including two members of Tyler's cabinet. Tyler was supposed to be present when the cannon fired. However, he'd stayed on the lower decks for purely incidental reasons. With no vice president, had he died, the president pro tempore of the Senate would have assumed the presidency. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and donating on Patreon. Donations from $2 to $15 a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.